What's up, MI40 Nation? BPAC here with my good buddy, Matt. Matt's actually going to be competing in four weeks' time, and he's asked me to help him with some posing. I've never actually helped him before, so this is going to be fun. So we're going to record it for you guys because the tips I give him, I get tons of people asking, you know, how, can you help me with my posing? What should I be doing to this? How can I improve this posing? How can I improve this body part? I'm actually a huge advocate of posing in general just to bring up body parts. If you don't have the ability to contract the muscle with no resistance, I always say you have no business adding resistance to it. So learning how to pose, even if people have no interest in bodybuilding at all, is a really, really good tool to learn how to contract your muscles consciously with your brain, especially get them really short, turn them on in weird positions. I mean, there's, there's positions in posing that you may not hit in a day-to-day -day activity, or they're, they're just awkward, and learning how to uh, contract it and activate your nervous system can really be advantageous in, in any type of weight training routine. So Matt's gonna start off with some really basic poses. We're gonna go through the compulsories. I'm gonna make some adjustments as he does, just, and you guys can hopefully see the changes as we go. Uh, and Matt's gonna learn how to pose, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it, let's just do front standing relaxed. Good, so the way you start posing, guys, is you always start from the bottom up. So Matt, what Matt's doing here is he's thinking about shoving his feet into the ground and creating tension in his thighs with his knees slightly bent. So as soon as he thinks about pushing the ground away from him, his quads should contract. The next thing he wants to do is he wants to stand really tall, and he's going to think about making the gap between here and his rib cage, his pelvis and his rib cage, as big as possible. So he's trying to shove his pelvis down and his rib cage up. There you go. So then notice what Matt did is he just put his arms up, he, he flared his lats, and now what we're looking at here is you actually look at the angle of his arm, and you want to see what angle of his arm is thickest because you've got to remember the judges are in front of you. So the more you can get a good chance to rotate this way, the bigger you can give the arm the illusion of looking on stage. So keep really wide in the lats and get a little internal rotation there. Stay tall here, shove those legs into the ground. Always start posing from the bottom up. So you can contract the calves, the quads, abs, and then up to the chest. And when you're posing this, in this pose, you want to be really, really big on the lats. So you stay really, really uh, swollen on your lats and really flared. And you're contracting your, your triceps and your biceps. There's not too much contracting of the pec. Uh, depending on what looks better for you. Sometimes you, people contract it and some people, times people don't. Most people I find look better if the pecs are just relaxed. Okay, uh, we're gonna do a front double bicep, Matt. So same idea here, Matt's just basically gonna start pushing his legs into the ground. Legs stay tight the entire time. A little bit more of a bend in your knees. So what you'll notice, guys, is if you bend your knees a little bit more, you're gonna get a little more flare in your quads. Your quads will look a little bit wider. Even It'll give the illusion of that. Okay, so what Matt is doing here, if you look at him, he's actually really well developed through the upper body, but he looks like he's like shrugging up a little bit. He's almost uh, a little tense through here. What you wanna do, Matt, is what's called just try to depress. Elevate your elbows a little, keep your elbows where they were, but depress your shoulders. Good, so now by, by depressing and pushing his elbows forward, push your elbows this way, there you go. You're gonna make your lats look bigger. Stay really hard on those biceps. Good, tight on the legs. Good, now let's try, let's hold that pose. I want you to try to hit your abs as hard as you can in that pose. Harder, harder, flatten out those ribs. Flatten out those ribs, harder, harder. Blow it out, blow it out more. There it is, good. Now that's one thing that isn't necessarily something you need to do in every pose. But it's a good tool to have in your repertoire um, to be able to do both of them. So you'll see a lot of bodybuilders, some go tall, some go short. Short meaning like contracted abs. To be able to do both of them is a really, really good thing. Uh, if anything, it just it can draw attention to yourself. If that's a good pose for you, you stay tall, everybody looks there, and they look away from you, and then you hit that, and then the eye naturally moves to movement. So it's always good to keep those things in your repertoire. Let's do a front lat spread. So this is going to be very similar to what Matt did on the front standing relaxed, except his hands are in his thighs, and he's going to do his best to contract his pecs really hard, his arms really hard, his legs really hard. Could get really wide on those lats. Get really wide on those lats. Good. So one thing you see a lot of people do is actually shrug up on this. What you want to try to do is relax for a sec. I want you to try to open your lower lat first. So you're going to, by opening your lower lat first, you're essentially causing the shoulder to depress. Good, stay nice and wide, nice and tight through those pecs and arms. Squeeze the brachialis. There you go. Good. Legs, squeeze hard, bend them a little bit. Good, nice and tall through that chest. There you go. Good, let's, let's try a side chest pose. Good, so what you see Matt doing here is he's lining up his forefoot with the middle, middle foot of the back. And the reason you do that, you always want to have a little bit of the back leg showing, because a little of the back leg can give the illusion of making that leg look bigger. So what he's actually doing is he's trying to pull this hamstring, push it against this leg so it kind of sits a little bit more. 
that's a little trick from, from uh, Flex Wheeler. Um, so you try to literally push this hamstring into that leg so it kind of shoves out more and gives you the, the illusion of more hang. Okay, sit a little bit more, drop your butt a little bit more. There you go. Remember to push the hamstring into the back leg. Good, nice and tall. Push both of your feet into the ground. There you go. One thing you guys always want to remember is always stay grounded. Always stay grounded by shoving your feet into the ground. If you're, if you, if you're moving around, you're losing balance, it looks really, really unnatural and really unpleasant. So let's, let's do it, side chest. Push the ground away. So by pushing the ground away, you're trying to literally push this down and push this up. There you go. There you go. Okay, so minimize the gap right there. Let's keep no gap. So you notice I'm at Matt is contracting that pack. This shoulder stays down. Not a lot of uh, dip. We don't want to be doing like that. We try to stay pretty even and pretty parallel. Um, now the one thing he's not doing that is really, really important is showing this oblique. And we really need to crack down on those obliques harder, harder, more, more, more. My blow it out hard. Blow out all your air out. I want you to cough. Blow it out harder. Blow it out. Blow it out. Blow it out. Good. So mo that's where most people go wrong. Is I show this in one of my other videos is most people contract their abs about 60% and never really gets to that point where it's like, like the idea is just always to get those abs as contracted as possible, especially when you're practicing or when you're training. Because when you go on stage, you don't contract at 100%, you contract at 80 or 90. So you need to be in practice contracting even harder so that on stage it's easy. Okay, let's try, uh, let's do back double first. Let's do back standing relaxed. Okay, so what I do on the back standing relaxed, good man, get wide. No, no, just get wide your lats. Okay, and again, drop the shoulders a little bit. So what I want to think about doing is we always contract from the bottom up. So what I'm actually doing, I'm actually up on my toes a little bit, trying to contract my calves, or at least shoving my, my, um, my toes into the ground. And I'm actually trying to pull, if you can imagine like doing, like you're on a skateboard, or trying to skim the, the, the gum off the bottom of your shoe. I'm actually trying to pull both of my hamstrings back and squeezing my glutes together. And when you squeeze your glutes, it's almost like you try to imagine having something between your cheeks and you're squeezing it that way. Squeeze the hamstrings, everything from the bottom. Forget about the top for now, let's just go. Calves, glutes, hamstrings, hard. Harder, tuck them in, good, there you go. You got it, good. Keep going, good, now let's do upper body. Let's do relaxed, there you go. Good, that's a really good pose for Matt, really, really balanced, he's got a great back. Uh, we gotta bring up those calves though. Okay. Can't have, we can't be working with B-Pack and have no calves, right? <laughs> uh, all right, man, let's do uh, back double bicep. One leg back. Awesome, so one thing you really wanna focus on here, guys, is what, even if Matt does it right away, you're gonna notice one hip is gonna be always elevated to the other. So you really gotta focus on this hip is up. You gotta focus on trying to keep your hips as parallel as possible. Now, the way I do that is I just try to stand relaxed for a second, Matt. Put the foot back. Try to just um, evenly, weight, evenly distribute your weight amongst your feet. Just even weight distribution. No, no, I don't want you to move. Just distribute your weight evenly. Now slowly shift it to your, don't move yet. Shift it to your left side, but don't let your hips go up and down. Just keep everything on the left side and keep your hips even. Now stick the right leg back, but don't let the hips move. There you go. There you go, that's better. And now a lot of people ask, should I turn my heel in? Should I turn my heel out? Well, look, really it depends what looks best for your hamstring and calf. Uh, Matt looks pretty good there. He's pretty neutral, not overly turned in at the heel. So by turning in the heel, obviously I just mean that. I don't, want, I don't like that very much. I like to keep it pretty straight. Good, let's hit the back double. So actually, one thing you're doing with your legs, this is a great tip, is you want to keep, remember the judges are looking at this leg, but they're also looking at that leg. So you have to make sure both things are contracting, which is actually really hard to do. So one tip I got is actually you want to think about pushing the forward leg forward and the back leg back. So you're trying to push them in opposite directions. So you actually find that's a really good way to contract them. Good, it gives you a lot of tension in those hips. And let's do back double. Okay, and again, you really gotta depress. Shove down, shove down more, harder, harder. And now the reason, if you actually see that, you get a lot more definition coming out through the teres and, and the lat. If you, and now if let's elevate. See what happens there? He actually loses the depth in his back. There's not a lot of muscle thickness in there because he's lengthening the lat, and a lengthened muscle is not a thick muscle, so we shorten, shorten more. Good, and now let's rotate those hands back a little bit. Okay, let's get uncomfortable, roll it back. There you go, chest up, there you go. Good, really contract down on here. I want you to push down on the, there you go, down. There you go, man, that's what we need right there. There we go, hold, hold. Good, now shove your elbows back into my hands, into my hands, push, 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 and rest. Good. So what we're doing there is we're just trying to get Matt, Matt's back muscles relatively short and contracted 
so that they really knot up and, and contract. And for those of you that have maybe a weak body part, particularly back, that's a great way to create that mind-muscle connection before you train. Everyone goes, oh, you don't want to waste the energy before you train. In reality, you actually want to train your nervous system so that you, you activate your muscles and all those muscles are turned on before you train, then you go train and the ability to contract them is so much greater. Let's do last spread. Good, hit those legs, hamstrings hard, glutes hard, let's go. Good stuff, good, good correction on the hips. Right leg, left leg forward, right leg back. Good, try not to rotate, stay nice and wide. Chest up, chest up more. You always stand proud. One of the things my idol, Flex Wheeler, showed me, the idea of stand proud. So when you're on a stage, you see a lot of guys posing like this or doing their back poses and they drop down. You stand up, stand up proud and show everybody what you got. Good, let's do side tricep. Get it again, bottom up, right? So we do calves, hamstrings. Remember you're trying to push this hamstring into that leg. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Yep. Good. Good, a little tighter on those abs, man. We gotta get control there. You gotta bring that rib cage down. You gotta flatten it out. Flatten it there. There you go. Really good job. Really good job. So Matt obviously has a big rib cage, just like me. So get, learning to gain control, that, uh, that upper part of the rib cage is vital to all these side poses. I mean, if, his, if he wants to make his waist look small and that rib cage is up, it's impossible. That's why I've had some, some difficulties in my life. If I don't pose enough, my rib cage is big, so it makes some of my poses look less than optimal. Sure, so a little trick for you here is if you just reach around behind you and grab your front thumb with the back hand, good, it'll allow you, does that feel a little more comfortable? About the same, yeah, a little less uh, tightness. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is hit that pose. It'll, give, it'll just free up your arms a little bit and allow you to bring this pec around forward. So keep, don't twist your body, just bring this around forward if you can, like roll it roll around the front, there you go. Exactly, so we're trying to contract this pec, your abs, your obliques, and obviously this arm and the leg. So there's a lot, a lot going on there uh, as far as contracting a whole bunch of muscles at once in sequence at, at the same time. As you can see, it's pretty exhausting. Um, let's do uh, abs and thigh. So the way, Matt's got very strong legs. So the way you hit abs and thigh, bring attention to your strong points. So let's, let's, see, let's see you flamboyantly hit the, the abs and thigh. That's it, strong. Harder on the abs. Harder, 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 not enough. Blow it out more, blow it out more. There you go, dude. Hold it there, hold it there, hit those legs. Switch legs, keep your abs contracted. Go, switch legs. Good, you gotta be able to do that more fluently. Good, most muscular. Just cramp it a little bit. So you notice I'm a huge advocate of you, you just gotta, and that's what it should be. Like if you're not contracting your abs hard enough so they're cramping, you're just not contracting them hard enough, to be honest. Let's do it. I mean, he'll be sore tomorrow. I mean, we, did, we did that three times. He'll be sore tomorrow. Because whatever you like. Um, so basically, for most muscular, you choose your, your favorite. So usually the good thing is it's always a good idea to have like two or three of them in your repertoire. Hit those abs harder. Hit those abs harder, 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 more. Blow it out. Blow it all through your mouth. I want to hear it. Harder. Keep going. Keep going. Go, 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 go. There we go. Right there. Good. Let's hit another crab. And we're done. Legs hard. Harder. Good, hold that, hold that abs. Hold that, chest stays up. Good, squeeze those biceps. Good, man, there we go. Good work. Uh, so there you have it, There's a wrap. that's a wrap. Uh, I think we've covered all the basic poses other than the quarter turns. Uh, but, you know, some little, little things just to teach you guys how to optimize poses. Really always keep your shoulders down, never a lot of elevation, uh, squeeze from the bottom up. It's really basic stuff for a lot of people, but. I get a lot of people asking me for basic posing advice. Um, that's it. Thanks very much to Matt. Best of luck to his show, uh, at his show in four weeks. And uh, be back out. <laughs>